Good morning everyone! Today I want to share with you 7 secrets to nail the perfect exposure every time. Oh yeah! Alright guys, welcome to a new episode. I hope you're having an amazing day today. We're gonna be talking about exposure because that's the most important thing in photography, obviously. Photography is all about capturing light and the last thing you want is to get the wrong light. And that happens a lot. Maybe you've had shots too dark, too bright, overexposed, underexposed, everything's blown out. There are a bunch of things that can go wrong and today I want to share with you my tips, my secrets, how I get the perfect exposure, what kind of mode I use, all that. We're gonna dive into the details. It's gonna be over seven secrets. <laughs> I love calling those like that. And uh, yeah, um, in case you're wondering why I'm still talking about the basics, I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna share with you the basics about photography, about how I use it, and then all together we can grow from there, meaning when I'm gonna be sharing my photo photography adventures, the photo shoots all around the world, you guys can get it right, and whenever there's something you don't understand again, then you just go back and rewatch those quick basics, and I think that's gonna be super helpful. So let's get right into it. How do I get the perfect exposure every time? Let's start with number one. So the first tip is actually finding the right light metering in your camera. There are a bunch of different modes, can be matrix, center average, spot metering and all that. And that will be crucial for you to understand how you're taking the photo and what kind of light you're seeing. So my secret number two is the mode that I use 90% of the time, the matrix mode, the center average mode that measures the light kind of all over the image but puts an emphasis on the center. And when we're talking about measuring the light, it simply tells you if uh, you're overexposed or if you're underexposed for your image. So depending on the light metering mode you, you're choosing, obviously it's gonna give you different information about that image. So that mode is perfect whenever you're shooting landscapes like that, when you're shooting people in situation, when I'm doing street photography. All right, so 90% of the time I'm in that mode. Now. The rest of the time, the 10%, I use another mode that is called spot metering mode. So that's my secret number three. Spot metering mode is super practical. I use it every time I want to have an information on an exact point. It basically uh, measures the light in a little circle in the center of your image or wherever you place it on your frame, but it really measures on the spot, which is really good when you're doing product photography, when you're doing portrait photography, because you want just the face to be lit up correctly. Or imagine you're doing a strong shadow work on street photography, while well, you want to have just the light part to be perfectly lit, you don't care about the shadows, you prefer to have it black. That is a great, great, great mode to use. I also use it a lot when I'm shooting those videos, guys, simply because, for example, when I'm totally backlit like that, I'm gonna put my hand here and I'm gonna measure the light on the inside of my hand or if I turn, I'm gonna measure it here and it just allows me to always have my, f my face perfectly lit. That's a quick tip. Uh, that's a big secret that I use and I started using it more and more and, and it's so crucial when you're shooting manual. So try it, let me know how it goes and now let's move on to the secret number four. All right, secret number four, guys, is actually uh, the most important one. It's that you need to understand how to read your light meter. And the light meter is in your camera. It's that graduation that shows you a zero, and then it shows you minus, and it shows you plus. Super easy to understand because now that you've chosen how you want your camera to measure the light, you can actually read that measure on that graduation. So whatever is on the left is actually negative, which means it's underexposed. Whatever is on the right is overexposed, is brighter. And the zero is the perfect exposure. So when you're looking at a scene before you're shooting it, you might see a little cursor that moves left or right. And depending on your set settings, you will be able to adjust it so that it stays on the zero. And that's how you will know you have a perfect exposure. It's actually very simple, but I think, um, yeah, you just need to get used to looking at that little thing because most of us, maybe we don't look at it, we just rush and that's it. And if you're shooting with your phone, most of the time you don't even see it intuitively. I don't know if you guys realize, but the sea of cloud is like literally moving in on me. I think I'm gonna fly the drone after through the clouds up. It's gonna be awesome. 
All right, guys, secret number five, something I do all the time is I actually use the histogram in my camera. So some cameras have histograms, some don't have it. If your camera has a histogram that you can display in your viewfinder on the back of your screen, use it. It's super practical. This is how it works. The histogram is that little box that has little mountains on it. I'm making it super simple. Whatever is on the left of the histogram on that box is blacks and whatever is on the right is light you're gonna see you're gonna see mountains appearing on your histogram it basically represents how your shadows and highlights are distributed on your image and it's super practical because the mountains represent where you have most of the information so if you have all the mountains to the left it means your image has a lot of darks and shadows if everything is to the right it means that your image has a lot of highlights it depends on what kind of photo i take sometimes my histogram is more to the right or more to the left or super centered if you want in theory a perfectly exposed image everything is in the center it's very nice nothing is on the right or nothing is on the left which means nothing will be burned out but the reality is that sometimes you want to create special effects and you actually move your histogram a little bit to the right or to the left overall the one thing you want to pay attention because it can get very like confusing or there are too many information in there the one thing you want to pay attention is if you see a huge mountain to the right or a huge mountain to the left that's when you know you're clipping information you're clipping the blacks or you're clipping the highlight that's the only thing you should know about your instagram and that's where it gets super super helpful in my opinion all right secret number six is super simple guys it is actually using the exposure compensation on your camera that thing is a plus minus that you might see you either have it as a dial on top of your camera or it might be a button that you have to press first so what does it do it's super simple it just compensates the exposure so whatever you're shooting in modes that are a little bit automatic like a s p or in manual mode with iso auto that's when it gets super handy you basically tell your camera by going minus one minus two minus three or plus one two three you basically tell your camera please overexpose by one or underexpose by one it's very very practical because you don't have to change all the settings it's just super quick you do it on the fly if you see something's too bright or too dark you just turn it one way or the other it's very very nice and easy to use in my opinion it is actually just like on your phone when you want to take a photo you tap on the screen and then you swipe up and down does the same thing but it's in your big camera oh yeah that's super practical i use it a lot now guys number seven is something i use every time i want to have special effects or when i really really want to control the light the exposure i have on camera it is simply to shoot in manual mode it's going to make a big difference because you're gonna be setting everything properly. You leave absolutely no room for the camera to do anything on its own. And that is very good because the more you're in control, the better you can get the result you have in your mind. And I can tell you, whenever you're shooting and there are strong shadows and you really wanna play with that, or you're shooting really backlit into people's faces, the last thing you want is your camera to mess up the exposure because uh, it was trying to do it automatically when actually you wanted that background to be blown out and you wanted to have the face perfectly lit if you don't know how manual mode works too much it's basically you're setting aperture shutter speed and iso on your own and what i suggest is just turn all the dials and see how it works what it does i know it's it, it's not a joke i'm literally uh, thinking you should do that that's kind of how I learned at the beginning. After you can read a little bit more, we can talk about it if you want. But yeah, just turn all the dials and see what changes what and when. And I think you're gonna learn a lot like that. Woo! All right, guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope you learned something. If you did, please share that video with others. I think uh, the more people learn about it, the better the photos of everyone are going to be. So right now I'm gonna go back towards the fire because I'm kind of freezing with my hands. And, and I want to say we came here for sunrise and we had this beautiful sunrise. That's my cousin, Michael. Hey, Michael. <laughs> we had that beautiful sunrise and we could see all the way over there. There is a Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc is actually the highest mountain in Europe. It's 4,800 meter high and super crisp, sharp with a beautiful, I mean, you can see the photo. It was so pretty this morning. With that being said, guys, 
I want to thank you so much for the support for being here on this channel. I hope you will enjoy the rest of the content. We're gonna go and take a few photography challenges and also on location photo shoots very soon. I just wanted to get those videos out for you guys. And with that being said, if you're new to this channel, I'm a travel adventure photographer. I create those tutorials all around the world. They're pretty cool, I think, in my opinion. So if you wanna join those adventures, hit the SUBSCREB button, ring that notification bell. It's gonna make an amazing noise. And, and, and I will see you in the next episode. Get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. Ooh, oh,